Boys, this guy looks like a literal creep. Yeah, Donald, be quiet. This Rose fellow is still talking. Yeah, Donald, he's introducing us to the world of Pokemon and Galar. Yeah, yeah, whatever, Joe. But anyway, everyone, welcome to our new series. This is Pokemon Sword. We hope you'll enjoy it, so please remember to like and subscribe. Yeah, and some of you may have noticed a change in Donald and Joe's voices. Well, it's because we've had to change the software we use to generate the AI sound, so we hope you all don't mind. Yeah, that's why we may sound a little different, but anyway, we're still here making content and playing a new awesome game. Yeah, that aside, here we go, boys. And this time, Joe will be playing through this game. I just hope we don't have to send the Pokemon we use in this series to therapy like Obama's team in Pokemon Uitra-san. Listen here, Donald, that was just one series where I played bad. And going forward, I don't want to hear any more comments about how bad or not I played through Ultra Sun, okay? I won't play like that trash bag Donnie, don't worry. But anyway, Leon gave us an awesome intro and now we can go visit our character for the first time. Yeah, and as always, when we start a new series, Obama will be making comments on how hot our mom is, so how is she doing this time, Barry? Sadly, Donald. This mom isn't as great as the others we've come across, and that includes the Pixel Moms, too. I think we should make a tier list of hot Pokemon Moms boys. It'll be a great video. I absolutely think we should do that, Obama. What a great idea. And if Donald disagrees, then we can just ignore him. Yeah, nice try, Joe, but I won't be sanctioning that. There is no way you even have time for that list since you're doing all the editing and scripting for this series. Yeah, this series is going to be super fun, actually, so let's focus on this for now. And by the way, everyone, we already have our team for this series sorted, so we won't be taking suggestions this time, but feel free to let us know your favorite Gaylor region Pokemon. Okay, this is officially the dumbest house we've ever had to live in, boys. It's just a goddamn straight line, and I still can't find my way around it. No, the worst thing is that god-awful backpack we have to lug around for this whole game. It's so ugly, holy hell. And it's also the color of a poo. So are you Barry, but you don't see anyone complaining LMFAO, but anyway, jokes aside, I do agree that backpack is utter trash looking. We gotta get a new one. Could someone explain to me why this game got so much hate? Apart from the whole National Dex thing, it's not a bad game and the graphics are amazing. Yeah, this outside do be looking very zesty, boys. The colors and the general vibe is straight fire. Yeah, and this sheep thing is trying to break through the gate there, Joseph. Are you gonna do anything about that? That Pokemon is called Wooloo Donald, and it's such a cutie pie. I even have a plush of it, which I sleep with every night in the White House. You know what? That literally doesn't surprise me at all. But anyway, we're here in Hop's house now. And sadly, his mom isn't a hottie either. Not gonna lie, I thought that was a man for a second, but nope. It's his mom. And their house is literally the same as ours, but all reversed. Yeah, well, that's called lazy designing Donald, probably so they could get this game out as fast as possible. But anyway, boys, I need to head into town now so we can get our first Pokemon. This British landscape is pretty accurate, if you ask me, except seeing the sun out here is a bit unnatural. So that's my only complaint so far along with our mom being ugly. Of course, that's your only real complaint, Barry, but check it out, boys. It's the champion Leon himself. And something I'd have liked to see in this game is a world tournament kind of deal like we have in Black and White 2. Nah, I'm sorry guys, but the real main issue with this game is that Charizard being like three feet tall. What the hell were they thinking with that one? Okay, yes, yeah, seeing Charizard be that small is actually mad, boys. There is no way a Charizard should be smaller than a trainer. I mean, Ash's one in the anime was like seven feet tall, remember? Okay, but if you both read the Pokedex information about Charizard, then you'd know his height is actually about that tall. They portray him way bigger in the anime for some reason when he's not actually that big. All right, well, as far as I'm concerned, that's a sin. And whoever came up with this idea should be thrown into the sun. I cannot accept the fact that Charizard be that small holy hell. You can complain about this all you want to, but who are you to make a change this big berry? And anyway, we're about to get to the most important part of this game, boys. We're gonna be picking our starter Pokemon. Yeah, and following our current trend of starter Pokemon choices, I think it's about time we picked the grass type, and this little one is actually one of my favorites, believe it or not. Yeah, so as Donald just ruined for you all, we will be picking the grass type starter, which is something I wanted to surprise them all with, you fat oaf, but anyway, it is what it is. There's only one reason why you'd both actually want to pick a grass type starter, and this one especially, and it's obviously a jab at me, isn't it? 
Obama, we literally have no idea what you're on about, but you better name it after him, Joe. But our choice still has nothing to do with you, LMAO. Well, it clearly has everything to do with me, but I think I'll change the subject here real quick and give a shout out to a viewer who has been asking us for one for a month now. Oh, yeah, the shout out. But please don't beg for shout outs from us, though. We will give you one, though, in episode two of this series to the person who can give us the best Pokemon fact they know. Yeah, we did this before, so leave comments on your best facts, everyone. And here we are with our Grookey Now boys. Yeah, we just celebrated getting our first Pokemon with a barbecue, which was cool to see. Usually, as soon as we get our starter Pokemon, we sort of just leave and never come back home. Oh, yeah, and as usual, I will be making my phone calls to make sure that we have the best team possible in terms of the looks department. For those of you new around here, I only allow shiny Pokemon to be used in these playthroughs. Yeah, our friend Donnie here is a simp for shiny Pokemon, and since this is all a meme anyway, we don't really care, so, yeah, as usual, the team will be full of absolutely goaded shiny Pokemon. Usually I argue with him about that, but this time I've given up since he'll ignore me anyway. But here we go. Joe, the first real battle of this game, and we actually have the Pokemon, which is super effective against our rival, which is a little strange. I was thinking that too when he picked Sobble earlier, Barry, but I guess that's good for us, although when the hell did he have the time to catch this sheep? Wooloo is utter garbage anyway, Donald, so if anything, it's just a time waster Pokemon in this first battle. Although I've never used one properly, so it could actually be pretty good, who knows? I would laugh so much if that sheep ended up having higher stats than our monkey does when they get to level 100 or something, Joe. That would make Obama feel even worse, LMFAO. I mean, I already feel bad enough with the name I just noticed you gave this grookey, Donald. I mean, this Pokemon doesn't even look like a berry, you know? Okay, GG to our rival. He better get used to losing because that's all he'll be throughout this playthrough. A big fat loser. I mean, living in the shadow of the literal strongest trainer in the world must be bad enough, and then on top of that, he goes and loses his first battle to his friend. I would just give up if I was him. Yeah, that would probably make me feel really bad too, let's be honest. He literally will always be a third-rate trainer. He can't beat his brother, and now he'll never be able to beat us unless Joe makes a mess of the battles. Barry, I could redirect you to the six-hour full movie I put together of you playing through Pokemon Ultra Sun but acting like it was Grand Theft Auto with the murder spree you were on killing our own Pokemon. Yeah, he's got you there, Obama. And now that footage will live for eternity on the internet for many thousands of people to see how bad you are at Pokemon battles. Let's just forget I said anything, boys, and instead focus on one of the first new Galar region Pokemon Joe has just encountered. This is the little squirrel dude, which I think is quite cute, actually. Yeah, that was Scalvit, which is a really neat Pokemon, although here's a little fact. Squirrels in the UK used to be red, but our American gray ones kind of took over population-wise and wiped the red ones out, basically. That's right, Joe. So as the British once took over our sacred lands, we have now done the same to them with the use of the gray squirrel. That is literally the dumbest thing I've ever heard of, but whatever. And neither of you have even talked about where we are here. Oh, yeah, I can do that. So this place is called the Slumbering Wild, and I literally have no clue why it's called that. And I also have nothing more to say about this place either. Imagine the kind of reviews Joe would leave for places he's visited on Yelp Obama. He'd be the guy to stake the obvious and then give the place a one-star rating. Yeah, probably. Or he'd fall asleep at the place he was visiting and then complain about the lack of sleeping facilities. He'd do that to his dentist, I bet LMAO. Jokes on you, Bear, my teeth are false. But anyway, did you two just hear that sound? It was the cry of a Pokemon, I swear. Yeah, that was clearly the cry of the legendary Pokemon Joe. Also, what do you two think about the legendaries in this game, of which there are technically three if you include Eternatus? From what I remember, Donald, the Doggo Pokemons are pretty good in competitive play. I don't know much about Eternatus, though, since I've never really used it. But maybe the viewers can let us know if it's any good. And speak of the devil here is one of them now. I can't remember the name of this one since they both basically have the same goddamn name, but I do know this one is the Sword Fellow. Yeah, dumbass, because you're playing Pokemon Sword, so obviously it would be that. Plus, this one is my favorite out of the two anyway. The Shield one looks silly in my opinion. And now, for some reason, we're challenging it to a battle, but none of our moves are even having an effect on it. I doubt this is the actual Pokemon Donald. It's probably like a hallucination or something. I get many of those these days, actually. 
I'm pretty sure you've had those ever since you were a fetus Joe LMFAO. But anyway, this whole part of the game basically introduces us to the legendary, which is a new thing since every other game makes a point to show off the box legendaries in some super amazing way. Yeah, you make a good point there, Obama. I feel like the introduction to the legendary in this game was a bit underwhelming, to be honest. And then, of course, Leon shows up right as we get taken out by the ghost doggo. A bit late there, bro, and this guy's meant to be the strongest trainer in the world. He basically came over here to lecture us on how to be safe instead of saving us. But anyway, he's still probably one of my favorite champs, so I can't really complain. And do you two think we should use the legendary on our team, by the way? Now, Obama, the team we have planned is already goaded to hell, and I'm sure the viewers will love it. It'll probably be one of my favorite teams to which we will use. All right, Donald, good shout. And also, that's probably the last time we'll see our mom again, too. And on that note, I think we should end the episode here, boys. We hope you enjoyed part one of our new series, everyone. So please remember to like and subscribe and consider joining our Patreon linked below if you want to help support the channel. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, everyone. We aim to get as many episodes out as fast as possible, but also don't want to get burned out, so please bear with us. Yo, boys, look who's back at Jizzy Joe Biden. The most gangster person you'll all ever meet, so go like and subscribe if you want to be as cool as me. Oh, great, and I thought this time he'd actually got rid of that ridiculous side, but here we are all over again, and he's actually playing the game, too. Okay, yeah, before all that, I see you actually went and got a shiny Grookey Donald. And we had lots of viewer suggestions telling us to try get the grassy surge ability. So that should be useful, too, actually. Yeah, so this little monkey dude should be able to help us beat this game, even though this game is so easy anyway. Also, you two, I believe we have a shout out to give to a viewer who gave us the best Pokemon facts. So who is it for this episode? Oh yeah, we'd like to shout out this person you can see on the screen right now. Turtwig was the first starter I picked in Gen 4. So I like this fact. And also Torterra is a goaded Pokemon for sure. Yeah, so thanks to Kansas City for that fact. Please leave us more facts in the comments if this video for the chance to get a shout out in the next episode, everyone. Okay, so we've made it to the Pokemon lab now, boys. So well done, Jizzy Joe. Maybe you'll do better than normal Joe in this series. Yeah, and here is one hot AF character in the series, boys. This is Sonya and she's a solid 10 out of 10 in my eyes. Keep your pants on Obama. I think she's taken since I get the vibe that Sonya and Leon are a thing maybe. At least it seems that way a little bit. Maybe I should introduce myself to her. I bet I could steal her off Leon boys, don't you two think? I highly, highly doubt that Joe, you moron. She's obviously more into me than you. Why wouldn't she? I'm just such a cool guy and a really good and strong Pokemon trainer too. Yeah, wait till we show her your entire six hour playthrough of Pokemon Ultra Sun Barry. She'd reject you faster than Joe asking a 20 year old on a date LMFAO. Okay, I won't actually take offense to that because I'm Jizzy Joe today and not that other sleepy old fart. But anyway, I just got the Pokedex from that hot ginger boys, but now we have to go see some other professor. Before that, Joe, we're getting introduced to the Pokemon centers. And I like the style of the ones in the Gala region, actually. You can even buy coffee on the left there, Joe. This is a building I don't hope to spend much time in like you had to Obama in your last playthrough of Pokemon. I'm hoping Joe and Jizzy Joe have surpassed your level of skill. Well, I didn't spend as much time with him as you did Donald in the Alola region, but I hope to make more of an appearance in this series since I'll be the one playing for once, which should be great fun. Trust me, Jizzy Joe, we all had to go to therapy after Obama's playthrough, but let's forget about that horror now and make our way to see Professor Magnolia, whatever her name is. Oh, great, here we are getting another tutorial on how to catch Pokemon boys. It's not like we've played through about five games now, at least. And Leon here thinks we're noobs or something. Yeah, and he didn't even attack the Wooloo to lower its health. He just threw the Pokeball at it and somehow magically caught it, which is mad. Yeah, that was a bit weird and goes against everything we know about catching Pokemon, actually. Back in our day, you had to first lower the Pokemon's health or put a status condition on it. Putting sleep as the status effect on a Pokemon is actually the best one to use Obama. I played around with a Pokemon catch rate calculator like a nerd and found that out. I'm sure I could have told you that without you having to mess around with a calculator first, Donald, but sure, whatever. I'm sure normal Joe would agree with that fact, though. And talking of Joe, glad he's not here right now because we're having our first official trainer battle 
other than the one with Hop from earlier. And this one is against a youngster. Yeah, and all he has is a stupid little squirrel again. I wonder if anyone actually used this Pokemon in a proper playthrough before. Hey, I can't believe they went and changed the youngster's name in this game, boys. Instead of Joey, this guy is called Jake, which is a sin. Yeah, I wonder why they changed that. But anyway, that battle was a joke, like every battle on this route is going to be. And this one is against a lass who should be in school but isn't. Okay, I do have a small complaint about Grassy Surge, boys. I like the ability a lot, and it makes sense, but it takes so long to activate that this battle would normally be over if we didn't have it. It doesn't really matter, though, does it, Donald? Our Monkey Bay Barry here is super up, and nothing will stop him. Well, you do realize the first gym is a grass type one, Joe, so that battle could end up literally being a drag. We probably won't have anything super effective against grass by the time we get there, too. As long as normal Joe isn't playing, then I'm sure we'll be fine, Obama. But here we are, battling the new first route bug type Pokemon in the Game Boys, and it's called Blip Bug. I think this guy's kind of cute. And plus, I really like him more because he's got that gold tint on him, just how I have a gold tint on myself right now. Joe, you literally have the opposite of a tint on you, dumbass. You have like five gold chains on your neck at once, and somehow you're able to keep good posture with all that crap on, too. As much as you like that bug, Joe, it's still a piece of garbage, just like how most bug-type Pokemon are, let's be honest. They're not all bad, Donald. How about we ask our viewers to leave a comment letting us know which bug-type Pokemon they think is the strongest? That would be fun to see. My vote would have to be with Genesec Joe. It's such a cool Pokemon to begin with, and having a cannon on its back makes it a literal badass, in my opinion. Genesect is cool, Barry, but I think Scissor is such a cool Pokemon, although the real proper answer to your question, Joseph, is Arceus with the insect plate on him, LMAO. I was waiting for that response from you, Donald, but anyway, boys, I just made it to Professor Magnolia's house, I think. And I was hoping she could become one of my groupies, but after looking at her, I'm out. She needs that walking stick to basically hold herself up, Jizzy Joseph, so yeah, that's never gonna happen, is it? She's too busy doing research on Dynamax anyway, apparently. It seems that's the purpose of the professor in this region, although I think Professor Sycamore has the best research. Agreed, Joe. He was researching Mega Evolution in Kalos, and he could be discovering new ones in Pokemon Legends Zay. Remember, boys, and maybe Flygon will finally get that Mega Evolution it deserves. All right, Jizzy Joe, looks like you got another battle to take part in to see if you're worthy of getting one of those Dynamax band things. And one thing I really like about all this is us not needing to go to a Pokemon Center to reuse Dynamax, unlike with Terrestrializing. I'm about to cream this guy again anyway, Barry. Watch me destroy him and his dumb sheep Pokemon and whatever else he's probably caught now. Hop is one of the worst rivals in the entire series, I think, guys. Don't you all agree? He's never challenging and his team is garbage at the end, too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he has three Pokemon now, too, Joe. And we still only have our little monkey boy, and he'll still get destroyed, which would also make me want to give up if this ever happened to me. I mean, it did kind of happen to you for a straight six hours Obama LMFAO. But that aside, I wonder what his new Pokemon will be. Here it is already being sent out, Donald. It's Rookady, and this little guy is one of the fan favorites from this region, boys. We almost did actually plan to use one for this team, but sadly it won't be happening this time around. Yeah, this guy is meant to be a raven or something when it fully evolves and it only has one evolution stage instead of two like most of the bird Pokemon in the series except Swellow. Swellow needs more love too since you brought him up, Joe. We made a poll a few weeks ago of everyone's favorite bird Pokemon and Swellow came in dead last. Agreed, Donald. Swellow is goaded, but we all know Talonflame is probably one of the best bird Pokemon in the series. I also like Star, Raptor, and Pidgeot since it can mega evolve. Okay, boys, I absolutely body this guy to hell and back, and he's still smiling. I guess that's some major positive vibes that he has going on. All I can care about is getting out Dynamax Band Joe. Plus, I bet you'd look extra dapper with that white band on your wrist. It'll match your suit, too. Talking of clothes, I think we really need to visit a store and get rid of that ugly-ass backpack we have on and this silly red sweater, too. Plus, our trousers look ridiculous. Well, if you want to get the better clothes, Joe, then you'll need to wait until we get a few more gym badges, since I think we unlock more clothes the further we progress into the game. Hey, that meteor wishing star thing just fell out of the sky from somewhere. Isn't that what the professor uses to make our Dynamax band two boys? I thought it came from Eternatus. 
I don't even know much about Eternatus, to be honest, Donald. I just know he has two signature moves, and somehow he's stronger than Giratina origin form. Okay, yeah, we saw a bunch of comments about that in the first episode of this series, and I find that utterly stupid. How the hell can Eternatus have a higher stat total than Giratina, who is literally the second Pokemon to exist ever? Was he the second Pokemon created, though, Obama, really? I'm pretty sure Arceus created Dialga and Palkia first since they represent time and space. Yeah, but Giratina represents antimatter, although I'm not sure if that's the proper term for him, but either way, it makes sense for him to be second. And then the other two came next. I don't really know what you two are on about, and I also don't give a shit either, and I think we're done here anyway, so it's time to leave. Is that before or after we get another catching tutorial from Hop? First his brother, and now him LMFAO. He was just explaining how you can sneak up on them and also move around them so they don't chase you, Joe. Something your other personality is very good at doing, but anyway, we need to head to Wedgehurst now. Yeah, we're gonna be finally leaving home and this whole area of the Galar region, and we're gonna be going straight to the wild area, which is one of the newer features in this game. Yeah, and then when Scarlet and Violet came out, the whole goddamn region basically became a wild area, which is actually something I really like about those games. It did make it feel more real. I really don't like it when the Pokemon ambush you from the grass, though, Donald. Like, this Yamper just chased me down, and now I have to waste my life battling it. Well, good you did, because that battle got us up to level 12, which is always good, but I do agree it can be annoying getting ambushed sometimes. I'd like to say the next few episodes will be longer than the first two. It's just getting out of this first area took a while, and we have been busy in real life, so we hope you all understand. Yeah, but we finally made it out that Godforsaken wrote Donald and can finally get on board the train all the way to the wild area. The wild area is huge, but we won't be able to access the whole place right now if I remember correctly, Joe. We need to get more badges from the gyms, and then I think more things will unlock for us. True Obama, but they ripped off the Lake of Rage from Johto and called it the Lake of Outrage in this game, which I really don't like, but that's where we need to go catch the dragon type of this playthrough. Oh God, our moms are solid one out of tens in this game. What the hell happened? And are our fathers still in that Pokemon war or what? I did make that observation in the first episode about our mom's Joe. And I still have no idea why we don't have fathers in this game. Surely we should since we did in Gen 3. And here we go, the adventure begins, boys. This is where the fun begins, but how about we close this episode for now? We hope you enjoyed it, so please remember to like and subscribe. Yeah, in part three, we'll be exploring the wild area, and we may or may not have our second Pokemon for this playthrough, so make sure you all stay tuned for that. And if you want to help support the channel, then consider becoming a member. I prefer you playing instead of normal Joe, by the way. Maybe we could just keep Jizzy Joe around, don't you think, Donald? I don't like either of them, but I guess Jizzy Joe is the lesser of two evils, LMFAO. Okay, boys, what if I told you the area we're about to go in is why this game is so hated? Well, that's obviously not entirely true, Joe, but yeah, the trees in the wild area do be looking a bit off. But anyway, welcome back, everyone, to part three of Joe's Galar region journey. Please remember to like the video and subscribe. And check out the newest member for our team, boys. This is Larvitar, who I've named Obsidian. Donald, why the hell did you get this Pokemon for our team when it's not even a Galar region Pokemon? It's from Gen 2. Because, Barry, we've never had the chance to use this Pokemon, plus Tyranitar is goaded to hell, and furthermore, Joe needs all the help he can get. So what's the issue, really? Hey, I'm all for it, so stop ruining this for me, Obama. Tyranitar is one of my all-time favorite Pokemon, too, and Johto was the first region we visited when we started our channel. Okay, well, I'm sure everyone else will love to see shiny Tyranitar when it's fully evolved, and check it out, boys. The solid 10 Sonya is back on our screens, and she looks even more gorgeous. Yes, yeah, she do be looking very solid Obama like something else, but anyway, we're about to venture into the wild area for the first time, Joe, so be careful. Yeah, but the Pokemon in the beginning areas will be weak as hell, remember Donald, so I don't think I have anything to worry about right now, although we need to do a Dynamax battle for sure. Yeah, Joe, you need to find a Max Raid Den in here. There's a bunch of them dotted around, so they should be easy enough to find. I was hoping to see more Pokemon walking around, but looks like we really have nothing to worry about here. Okay, this is the den we'll be heading into first, boys. I have no idea how this will go or how strong the Pokemon inside the den will be, but oh well. Okay.
and we can actually invite friends in our friends list to join us. But since Joe has no friends, I guess we'll be battling with some random AI. Wow, this is a battle against a stupid bug thing. I was hoping for a Gigantamax Zekrom or something in here, but all we get is this shit. Were you actually expecting to find Zekrom in here, Joe? In a level 10 raid den? You really have lost the plot now, haven't you, dumbass? And this is gonna be a disaster, I can already tell. We have nothing useful against this thing, and if you had been smart and chosen Score Bunny instead of the stupid monkey, we'd then have a better chance. Okay, yeah, this was maybe a mistake. We just got nuked by some mud attack by a bug. And now Obsidian is dead. Joe, what the hell are you doing, man? Now we can't even send out another Pokemon and just have to stand on the side like a little peasant cheering the other morons on. Yeah, this was a really big mistake, Joe. Maybe we should have come back later with stronger Pokemon, or you should have let me and Donald have a go. Look how stupid we look, Joe. And it's all because of you. You have made us look like a fool standing on the sidelines when we're meant to be the Pokemon champion. Well, the other three here are barely doing anything to help the situation, so I wouldn't say this is entirely my fault, boys. How about we give the shout out to one of our viewers instead? All right, fine. And the shout out for this video goes to the viewer you can all see on the screen right now. It's cool to know about Haxorus being the first Gen 5 Pokemon that was created and something we didn't know either. Yeah, and that same viewer pointed out how Corvid Knight has three evolution stages, not two like Joe said it did in the last episode, The Idiot. Yeah, that was my bad, but I don't really know much about this gen. I don't even know the number of this gen is either, so yeah. Okay, well, in other news, this battle is somehow still going on, even though we're back in it, but please post more comments about Pokemon facts for the chance to get a shout out in the next video. Oh my God, finally, this stupid battle is over. And please never enter another den until you're ready, Joe. This was such a waste of time and an embarrassment, too. Okay, but did you see the amount of candies we got from McDonald? I can use them to level up our team now, which should help us with the next battle. Joe, you better not waste those candies on something stupid. And also, holy hell, you just found a female combi, too. Those are super rare, Joe. Yeah, it's cool and all, but has anyone actually ever used a Vespi Queen? I mean, probably not. And also, there should be a Vest Viking, too. Kings are just better than Queens. Queens are the most powerful piece in chess, Donald. And also, there is only Queen Bees, too, not King ones. And I should care about all that because of what exactly? Anyway, my point still stands, and I'm sure there is someone who will agree with me, although Vespi Queen is not bad, actually, if I'm being honest. Boys, I keep finding these Watt things and I have no idea what they're for or how I should use them. Does anyone have any ideas? I have no idea, Joe, but I'm sure a kind viewer will let us know how those Watt things work. You keep finding, but I doubt it's important to be honest. Yeah, it's probably not important, Joseph. And look, we actually made it to the first major city of this game too, boys. This is also where our first gym battle will be, isn't it? Actually, Donald, I think this, this is where the Fire Gym Leader fellow is going to be based. The first gym in this game is actually a grass type, which we have nothing good against. Grass is like the little peasant typing no Obama. Just watch me slay that gym leader, whoever he is. This city has the industrial Victorian kind of style vibes, don't you both think? I do be liking how this place looks and feels a lot. Maybe we'll see Jack the Ripper here, LMAO. I hope not Donald, but we have run into the hot goddess again, Sonia. She makes me very thirsty if it was already apparent. But anyway, I'd like to have a conversation about how the gym leaders in the Galar region are like the least memorable ever. Hey, that's a very good point, Obama. The gym leaders in this region barely got any screen time in the anime except like B and Alistair, but the others just got ditched kinda. Don't forget Rayan too though, Joe. That guy is said to be as strong as Leon almost, which means he's probably stronger than every other champion too. I think a battle of Raihan versus Volkner would be super cool to watch, boys, don't you think? I mean, Volkner was so strong that it made him bored and depressed. I think that's his fault, though, for not pushing himself. I mean, he could have gone off to find some stronger trainers to battle because there's always someone stronger, remember? True, he could have. Joe and Volkner did say if he beat us in Gen 4, then he'd leave the gym and go take on the Elite Four, which I bet he could have beaten as well, actually. Hey, Leon just gave us a pretty neat item, Joe, so you should stick that on Grookey. That Miracle Seed boosts the power of Grass-type moves, although it won't be useful until we battle Nessa, who's the Water-type leader. Oh, hey, Joe, this is the part of the game where we get our Gym Challenge outfit, and we get to choose what number we want on the back of it. 
Well, if that's the case, then I have the perfect number. He, he, he. You guys will absolutely love this. Oh, for the love of God, Joe, don't put 69 on our shirt and then knowing our luck will get canceled for it. Hey, I did think about that for a little bit, Obama, but decided against it. So instead, you can see what number I'll put on our shirt. I bet it will still be something stupid, but either way, let's see this then, Joe. And I like the fact that in this game, it's like we're not the only ones taking on the gyms, but lots of other people are too. Okay, Joe, you have gone and picked the number 81. I have no idea what that's a reference to. So is it your IQ or something? Yeah, very funny, Obama, but no, I'm not even gonna tell you what it's a reference to so people can comment below if they want. And I wanna see if anyone knows. It's not even a big deal anyway. Another good thing about this is we get to stay in the fanciest hotels for free Joe because you're taking part in the gym challenge. You say that, Donald, but the one we're about to stay in here is called the Voodoo Inn. Now, what kind of trash name is that for a five-star establishment? True Joe, they could have called this place the Arceus Inn or the Dialga Inn. That would be much more fitting for such a luxurious place, but instead they go with Voodoo. Hey, Obama, here's another chance for you to start sipping out again since Sonia has showed up and she's going on about some boring history crap to do with the Gala region. She's talking about the legend of the Sword and Shield Donald, which everyone seems to think is a person, but it's clearly a Pokemon. I mean, they goddamn thing is the box art on the front of the game. Obama, you moron, they can't see the box art, can they? They don't even know this is all a simulation as well. But more importantly than all that, this is our first introduction to the evil team in this game, boys. And wow, we're jumping right into a battle with them, too. So everyone, this is Team Yell, and basically I have no idea what the point of them even is. It's like Game Freak just came up with his team because they need to have a team in every game. Yeah, you're probably right about that, Joseph. And I think the since Gen 5, every team after that has just gotten worse and worse. Team Plasma was the last team where you felt they were actually evil and could do some real damage. Yeah, Getsis was just downright evil. Remember in the Ultra Sun post game, he just literally beat up Lily and pushed her over. That was child abuse as far as I'm concerned. Hey, this Larvitar little dude is so awesome, Donald. Thanks for adding him to our team. So far, he's one-shotting everything, although is he even supposed to have this move yet? Joe, stop getting caught up in the details and just enjoy the damn Pokemon, will you please? When it's fully evolved, our little Larvitar is gonna be one of the MVPs, that's for sure. For God's sake, how many of these battles is there even gonna be boys? It's like these guys never end and just keep appearing to battle us, and I don't even know why. They're doing all this nonsense to try stall us from participating Obama so their leader can win. I think her name is Marnie and she's not even bad to be honest. At least in the anime, she wasn't. Yeah, Marty is pretty chill, not gonna lie. And her brother is that dark type gym leader, which I think we'll be encountering later on, boys. Pierce or something is his name, I think. Yeah, he's pretty neat, too. Got nothing bad to say about him, and his team is quite solid as well, although there isn't many dark type gym leaders in the series, is there? If that's the case, Obama, then I think you should become a dark type leader. You would be very good at it, LMFAO. Shots fired right there by Donald LMFAO. But anyway, I think that's all those Team Yell Grunts beat for now, I hope anyway. I wonder if they'll be doing anything evil like a proper team. I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear any of that, YouTube, but yeah, for now, Joe, that's Team Yell dealt with, and even Marnie showed up in the end to see what all the fuss was about. This Pokemon game really takes a long time for us to actually start battling, doesn't it, boys? I mean, take Gen 4, for example. By this point, we'd probably already be in Eterna City and beaten the gym there too. Yeah, and in those games, I wasn't getting as lost as I am now, but I'm also not really reading the dialogue boxes properly, am I? Well, in your defense, Joe, I think this game can be a little confusing on where to go sometimes, but they make up for that with some of the easiest battles ever. I mean, even the battle tower at the end of the game is a joke. Okay, Joe, now all the drama has been dealt with in this dumb hotel we can head straight to the stadium and start the inauguration of the Battle Gym Challenge. Okay, fine, but we're still not actually having a gym battle yet, remember. I don't even care about some stupid inauguration. I already have to attend a bunch of those as president. Hey, Joe, when we start visiting the other stadiums, you'll see a human Pokeball guy just standing about, and if you talk to him, you'll get super rare balls. Okay, we're about to change into our Gym Challenge outfit, Joe, and look, they even zoomed in on your stupid 81 on the back of your shirt and I still don't know what that means. 
Yeah, and you probably never will, but hey, look, it's that Rose fellow again, boys, and his assistant person. I guess since he's the chairman, he's going to be funding everything. Yeah, but I bet I'm still richer than he is, Joe, and I have a better hairstyle, but you guys will probably say something like how that's debatable. Um, yeah, that is very debatable, Donald, but either way, you aren't imprisoning a legendary Pokemon in your basement like this psychopath is. So I'd say Rose is a lot worse than you are. Hey, look, all the gym leaders of this place are getting a really cool Avengers-style entrance, whilst all I get is a stupid white T-shirt with my age on the back of it. So that's what that number means, Joe. It's your stupid age, seriously? Well, I think that being your IQ suits you a lot better, LMRO. I literally can't remember half these guys' names except that hot one in Royan, and then there's Opal, who is, how should we say? A little eccentric. Opal is a real G Donald. She's like the gangster of all gangsters, and she also loves the color pink, too. Actually, her favorite color is purple, but sure, whatever. Anyway, look, you also got your Avengers style entrance, too, Joe, so you should be happy now, right? I would hardly call that an entrance Obama. It was like five seconds long, and we didn't even get an introduction like all the gym leaders did, which is a bit rude. Well, that's because we're a nobody right now, Donald, and we need to work hard and beat all the gyms so that we can become a somebody, isn't it? That's one way to put it, Joe, and look, that Rose dude even spoke to us directly. He must be impressed since we have Leon vouching for us or something like that, I guess. Okay, well, with that, boys, our gym challenge has officially started, hasn't it? And we can now head towards Tuffield or whatever that town is called where the first gym leader is located. Yes, yeah, so this map follows a clock, kind of, so we're basically going to be heading clockwise all the way around the area and battle each gym as they come. And another cool thing is we get to use Fly right off the bat in this game, boys. And it's not even a HM anymore either. We basically have taxis which are flown about by that Corviknight Pokemon. Yeah, that sure does make traveling more bearable, although this map is rather big compared to the other regions, I think, so it only makes sense for them to let us use Fly right now. And before we end this episode, boys, it looks like Hop wants to get more depressed and lose another Pokemon battle for some reason. I mean, I don't know why he still hasn't given up yet the Fool. Well, our team and his one are basically the same level, so this should be close, although I think we have the stronger Pokemon overall. Plus, them being shiny makes them stronger in my eyes. The fact that he still insists on using the sheep and thinks he'll beat Leon with it makes no sense. Although I remember in the anime, Sonya said Hop had an illness or something, so maybe it messed with his head. Yeah, Donald, I think you should stop right there with those comments before you offend someone. But anyway, he's still trash and gonna lose. With his current team, yeah, for sure. I can't remember if he'll use any pseudo legends or not, but I think he does end up using the other legendary by the end of the game, Joe. He can use a goddamn Palkia for all I care Obama. He's still gonna lose to me. Well, if he had Palkia right now, Joe, then I think we'd be in trouble. Although saying that, Grookey would still be super effective against it, which is quite funny. Look, he's going on about how we've mastered type matchups again, like we're some sort of idiot. I mean, even Joe knows all the type matchups now, don't you, Joe? Well, I always forget what's strong and weak against poison for some reason. And the same goes for fairy typing too, and dark as well. Those are ones which I can't usually remember the top off my head. That's a little embarrassing at this point of our channel being established and everything, Joe. But anyway, Hop only has one more Pokemon left, thank God. And it's still his little Rookie D Pokemon. Nothing threatening, I guess, but I would have thought he'd have at least one Pokemon that would be evolved right now. I bet he'll have his little Sobble evolved the next time we meet him Obama, which will probably be after the first gym or something. Yeah, maybe Joe. Also, this ability is really getting on my nerves now, too, for real. It heals the opponent up as well, which is just stupid. I think it should only heal up Grass-type Pokemon. I mean, this ability would even heal up fire types, which is messed up. Well, it seems the ability only activated for about three to five turns Obama, and then it wears off, which is probably why it heals up both sides of the team. Doesn't make a difference to me, boys. This guy got destroyed yet again to the surprise of absolutely no one, so yeah, GG to him. And on that note, I think it's time to wrap up the episode, everyone. Thank you so much for watching, and see you all in part four. Yeah, thank you, everyone. If you want to help support our work, then consider becoming a member of the channel or join our Patreon link below. It really helps us to keep making content for you all. Yeah, and in part four, I guess we'll be making our way to the first gym and taking it on, so stay tuned for that, my beautiful people.
Well, 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 everyone, I have some amazing news for you all today, but welcome to the new episode. We hope you enjoy. I wasn't aware we have any news today, Joe, unless you're just dropping this on us last minute. I don't even remember Obama mentioning anything about this either. Um, yeah, I have no idea what news we have to share with the viewers or anyone else for that matter, but I would like to remind everyone to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already, as it really helps us out. Okay, then, Joe, what's this so-called news you have to share with everyone? I will tell you all later, as it's a super-duper huge surprise, but first of all, we need to hurry our ass up and get to the first gym. Wow, you can't leave us hanging like that, Joe, but fine, we will wait if you're gonna make us. And yeah, that is also true about the first gym. You need to take it on in this episode. I guarantee the dumbass has forgotten what he was gonna tell us, or it's just gonna be some useless piece of information. Well, I'd like to talk about the reception we got from showing off our little Larvitar in the last episode. Boys, everyone loves seeing this little fella, and they can't wait for him to become a Tyranitar either. Yeah, I mean, he is the OG Godzilla Pokemon Joe, and everyone loves him too. I don't know a single person who hates Tyranitar. Plus, it's always good to show the Gen 2 Pokemon some love. And it was all thanks to yours truly that he's a member of this super awesome team. And you know, I think the team we're planning on using in this game is probably going to be one of the strongest ones we've ever used too. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me, Donald. Although I don't think it will be the actual strongest. I mean, in our Pokemon Platinum playthrough, you decided to use Arceus and there is nothing technically stronger than him. That's true, Joe, and then in our Omega Ruby playthrough, we used Mega Rayquaza in the end, which absolutely destroyed everything that came its way. Yeah, but those are just single Pokemon boys. I'm talking about our team as a whole being the strongest, which I think this one has the potential to be. Well, we won't be using the legendary in this game, Donald, unlike some of the other playthroughs we've done where we have used them, especially the goaded ones like Giratina. Okay, this trainer took way longer than it should have to be. I think our team needs a lot of training, actually, boys, before we battle the first gym. I mean, Larvitar's weak to grass, remember. Nah, Joe, don't worry, you'll be fine. Just make sure to use healing items if you need them, unlike our resident moron here being Obama, who didn't do anything useful in Ultra Sun. Sorry, Donald, I didn't hear anything you just said. I was too busy staring at the goddess on our screen right now. I swear, every time she appears, she becomes even more gorgeous. I bet you make Michael feel very sad with the way you talk about Sonya Berry LMFAO. I wonder if she knows about this. She doesn't even watch our videos, to be honest, Joe, so I have nothing to worry about right now. Oh, now we have something to use against you, Obama LMAO. If at any point you piss me or Joe off, then we'll have to speed dial Michael and make sure she knows you're in love with some polygons in the shape of a person. Go ahead, Donald. I made sure you were blocked on her phone after you sent voice recordings of yourself to her breathing heavily that one time. Hey, that was a butt dial. I told you that, so stop spreading misinformation, bro. Anyway, check it out, boys. We've made it to this tunnel thing, which I suppose is meant to be a cave. Yeah, this place is full of rock types, which means our Obama monkey Pokemon will actually do pretty well here, Donald LMFAO. Yeah, still don't appreciate that sentiment, but what I do like about this place is that rock fire coal Pokemon thing rolling around on the railway tracks. It's a neat little detail they've added in, don't you all think? What I think is how the hell do these minor girls look like goddamn supermodels? I mean, look at this lovely lady here, boys. She's almost on Sonya's level. You're right, Donald. She's so hot. And then she uses a Diglett as her Pokemon, which is so dumb. But anyway, she will still lose. I think now would be a good time to shout out the viewer who gave us the best fact from the last episode. So here they are, everyone. Yeah, thank you to Ben Enya1337 for this fact about obtaining Larvitar and a Jangmo-O in the wild area. We never actually used a como -O before, but would love to one day. Yes, yeah, so comment more facts, everyone, and if you can make them specifically about the Gala region, then you'll have a better chance of getting a shout-out in the next episode. Wow, Joe, this drill burr is really giving you a lot of grief, isn't it, LMAO? I thought you said battling in here would be easy, but turns out you are, in fact, garbage. Barry, shut the hell up, bro. You have no right to talk. And I'm not struggling either, but our team is dead-ass weak as hell right now. If this thing was evolved and we were battling an Excadrill, then yeah, I'd understand. But this is a weak mole thing, Joe, and you can't even beat it. Hey, I'm slowly withering its health down, Donald. So instead of complaining about my battle strats, why don't you talk about something useful instead? Okay, wow, you finally beat the thing. But yeah, how about we talk about that bead fellow? What do you all think of him? I don't know Obama. Personally, I think he's super stuck up and arrogant, kind of like me, which is not acceptable as there can only be one person like me, and that's me. Wow, 
You have forgot about your planet size ego, Donald, but speak of the devil boys. It's the main man himself, Bede. Yeah, it's Bede. And he obviously wants you to battle him to see how strong he is and inflate his ego even more as well. You better not lose against him, Joe. Look, he thinks he's so cool holding that great ball and flaunting it about guys. Joke's on him, though, because all our Pokemon are in luxury balls, which we all know is the best ball to have. Well, he's actually leading off with a solid Pokemon to begin with, Donald, so I think he deserves some credit. He's using Solosis, which I remember us using in one of our Gen 5 playthroughs at one point, and it was goaded. Yeah, it's too goaded because it might actually end up killing us, Barry. But this little gummy bear ball thing is super cute, and we love it. Oh, wow, he has both the Gen 5 psychic types, it seems. Now he's sending out a Gothita, which I think is the worst out of them both. Yeah, I agree. Donald Gothita is the worst out of them both, but I'm sure we'll get some comments now telling us to shut the hell up and leave Gothita alone. LMFAO. Oh, yeah, I did see lots of comments from the viewers letting us know that those Watt things we found in the wild area are used for buying stuff from the vendors dotted around the area, so thank you for letting us know about that. Okay, but you still haven't told us what we can actually buy yet, Joe. Is it like technical machines or new battle items or what? Yeah, basically that kind of stuff, Donald. Battle items and technical machines, although they're called TR items in this game for some reason. How about we focus on beating this stupid little nugget thing, Joe? You still haven't even got close to winning this battle. And we have one more Pokemon to deal with as well. Yeah, to be fair, this guy is only using psychic types, basically, and we have Larvitar, who is a dark type, but right now he's pretty trash, not gonna lie, boys. The thing with Larvitar is because it's a pseudo-legendary Donald that takes ages to evolve, and I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being the last Pokemon on our team to fully evolve as well. Well, we will be using a Dragapult too, Joe, which I think has an even higher level to reach before it's fully evolved. That's the only downside of pseudo-legends, in my opinion, but I think that that trade-off is worth it. Wow, finally Joseph has beaten this little pink goon and talking of evolution. I think we reached the right level for Grookey to evolve into its second stage, boys. Hey, yeah, you should be the happiest Obama. You're finally evolving from basic monk to middle stage monk. How about giving us a nice grin to show how happy you are? Or how about I give you a nice smack on your crusty old face, Joe, to show how much of a dick you're still being, bro? Well, this might make you feel better, Barry, because I think the end of this cave system is just there now, which means Joe can finally get ready to take on the first gym leader in Galar. I was doing some research on him, and I'm feeling even less confident about this battle, boys. The thing about the Kalos region is the gym leaders didn't unlock Mega Evolution until like the fourth gym, but here they get Dynamax right off the bat. Well, yeah, but it's balanced, Joe, because you also get to use Dynamax, so stop being a little girl and crying about the first battle and just get your ass there and get it done. Oh, yeah, we will need to come back to that patch of grass later, Joe, because you can catch Eevee in there, and we need one for this playthrough. Yeah, I'm still anxious about this battle, Donald, to worry about that right now. So how about you deal with it later instead, since you'll get a shiny one anyway? Yeah, let him focus on this gym battle first, Donald. It's also the first one of this game, so I would rather he win on his first try and then worry about Eevee after. But what evolution are you planning on using anyway? That is going to have to be a big surprise, Obama, but all will be revealed in the next couple of episodes, I assume. Anyway, the guy we ran into here is the gym leader, Joe. And he looks like a four years drawing. Yeah, he literally does look like a four-year-old draw him, and he didn't even have a nose, for God's sake. He just had spots where his nose should be, which means this guy's a mouth breather. And he's probably going to destroy us now you've gone and insulted him, Joe. But a thing with this game is you can't just go battle the gym leader. We first have to do a puzzle, if I remember correctly. Actually, Obama, before we even head to the gym, we have to follow this stupid yamper. And I feel like this Pokemon and Fido from Gen 9 are pretty much the same Pokemon you know. Oh yeah, I forgot Sonya has a Yamper, so I guess this one was hers. You can't insult it now, Donald, because it's Sonya's and we worship her, remember? Hey, look, someone sketched a drawing of Joe in the ground over there, Barry LMFAO. And they even gave him a tail, too. So funny, Donald, but I'm not that old, just FYI. And we're here to investigate it, too, because it's part of the Galar region mythology, I guess, but no one has a clue what it means. Well, technically speaking, Obama and myself do know what it means, Joe, since we've played this before. So we could drop the spoiler bomb on you if you like? Yeah, those aren't the type of bombs Obama usually drops as a Donald, but anyway, I can finally head into the gym now, boys, and take it on. And this guy is about to feel the power of my Pokemon in their noses. Yeah, that is a bit weird, actually, Joe. You make a good point. Even our Pokemon have a nose, but this human fellow doesn't. I bet he snores, too, in his sleep. Hey, Joe, you ran past the Pokeball guy. Remember I told you about them? They give out free rare balls if you talk to them at every gym, so don't forget to do that. Oh yeah, we asked you all to guess what the 81 on Joe's shirt means in this game. 
And it's because at the time of this recording, he's currently 81 years young, the old boy. Okay, you two time to focus. I've made it into the gym, and it seems our first puzzle here is to herd all the Wulu into the fences to move on to the next section. Well, this should be interesting with your arthritis hands and fingers, Joe. This puzzle requires quick movements and methodical thinking, none of which you have. Oh yeah, what was that then, Donald? I just herded all those Wulu into that fence faster than I herded youngster Joey into okay, my- Okay, for the love of God, don't finish that sentence, Joseph, and get on with the next puzzle, please, holy hell. Yeah, anyway, I'll pretend that never happened and instead compliment you, Joe, for doing so amazing in this puzzle. Yeah, change the subject, Donald LMAO. And now we have our first trainer battle in here, boys, and I take it these guys are supposed to be taking part in this puzzle, too. Yeah, they're taking part in the gym challenge battles as a whole, Joe, and if you beat them, then I guess they're knocked out of the competition and won't get to battle the gym leader. Okay, this is gonna end real bad, Joe. The trainers in here are already higher level than us, and on top of that, they have super effective moves against us, too, so we're gonna lose big time. Nah, Donald cut it out with the negative vibes, bro. I shall go this plus Barry gave me a prep talk too. Obsidian and the monkey will carry us. Joe, you're literally using tackle, which is like the weakest move ever to get us through this gym. How is this gonna end well? I take back my pep talk or whatever it was I said earlier. Yeah, Joe, sorry, but using tackle in here is a big mistake, dude. We should have caught one of those fire type Pokemon from earlier that resemble the coals. No, Donald, we won't be making this easier for ourselves. And anyway, I can use the old switcheroo strat to swap one Pokemon out if the other is about to die. Okay, I skipped ahead for you, Joe, because this stupid puzzle was taking your old ancient brain way too long to finish. But anyway, we've made it to the end, boys. So now it's time to take on the gym leader. Yeah, and I really have low expectations for this, but Joe seems to have a lot of confidence, which I guess is a good thing for now. Trust me, Donald, this will go exactly as I see it going in my head. Plus, I have some items we could use in case things go south, but I doubt they will. All right, well, here we go, boys. The battle against the grass-type leader in the Gala region, and I didn't pay attention to his name, so I have no clue who we're battling. Okay, well, his first Pokemon is a Gossifleur, which I think is quite cute, to be honest, but I doubt it's the strongest grass-type we will encounter here. All right, our ability just activated, but I think he's gonna get the better use of it since his team is higher level than us boys. Now, my confidence feels shattered. Hey, Double Hit did a solid amount of damage, actually, Joe, so that move might be the way to go if you want a good strat. Although we're walking on eggshells here, to be honest. The issue here is he can also restore his health with our ability Obama, so we could be dragging this whole battle out. Yeah, but if you look at the amount of damage he's doing to us, it's not actually that much. You know, Donald, I think this is actually going to go well for us. Well, I'm going to spam double hit this entire battle, and then off screen, Donald, you're going to catch that EV and also train our team up since I'm recording and editing these videos. All right, buddy, you have yourself a deal, and well done, too, for beating the first Pokemon. Now on to his final one, which will Dynamax. We can Dynamax, too, though, Joe, so don't forget to do that, you old fossil. But hey, our Larvitar just learned the move for Rock Slide, which should be helpful later on, but absolutely useless right now. Okay, this fellow's final Pokemon is Eldegoss, which I guess is the final evolution of the first Pokemon he used, and it looks like a cute little floofy ball. This floofy ball, as you put it, Joe, is about to get boosted drastically now, so get ready for this. If our monkey goes down, then we have lost, because there's no way Larvitar will survive against this thing. Okay, wow, yeah, GG Joe. Double hit is now doing crap against this guy, and when we Dynamax, our moves will still be garbage. Yeah, but don't forget that we can resist his grass-type moves, Obama, since we are also grass, remember? Yeah, clearly, Joe. That overgrow attack almost did half damage to us, you fool. So now you better Dynamax, too, if you want to have any chance of winning this battle. I doubt our moves will even do anything like the amount of damage he did to us just now, though, Donald. I say we just start saying our prayers or something. Okay, boys, here we go going big. I must say, actually, that Dynamax is pretty cool, and unlike Mega Evolution, all the Pokemon can Dynamax, which kind of evens the playing field a little bit. True, Joe, but we still did barely anything to this white cotton ball. And it's only three levels higher than us, too, which is just cracked. Wow, yeah, we're getting bodied here, Joe. I hope you have some plan in mind for this, because I have no idea what to suggest to you, bro. Well, if you both don't know what to do, then I'm in trouble, I think. And Barry is the only thing able to stand up to the cotton ball Donald's right. I mean, something you could do, Joe, is spam growl and then hope for the best because there is literally nothing else you can do right now to deal with this thing. Growl won't make a difference, Donald, since it will only take one grass-type move to wipe out Larvitar. 
Yeah, he has a point. Donald Growl won't make much of a difference at this point. Maybe if he has used it in the beginning, it would have been a better strat. Although we can all take blame for not suggesting that to you earlier, Joe. Wow, you two are being extra nice to me today, especially during this battle, and that makes me super happy, boys. Yeah, don't hold your breath, Joe, but hey, look, the Eldegos has gone back to being small, which means we're also only one turn away from that happening to us, too. Okay, so even when it's small, the little shit still somehow does so much damage to us. Holy hell. I think we're going to get wrecked. And yeah, we're about to go back to normal size. I think I'm just going to spam our strongest attack and hope for the best at this point, boys. I mean, let's be honest, there's nothing else you can really do at this point, Joe. So yeah, go for it. And in the meantime, I want to know which evolution you're going to pick. So will you please tell me? Wow, we're actually going to lose, aren't we, unless Larvitar somehow comes in clutch for us. And yeah, Obama, we can't tell you which Eve we're going to use because it's a surprise. OK, boys, I might have to actually drag this out and use some super potions, which we picked up earlier, although I only have two left now. Yeah, Joe, I think you should have just let us die so we could end this misery. You literally wasted a super potion on this Pokemon, which was a waste of everyone's time. Well, in other news, I can tell you that we will be using the best EV type, actually Obama only, because it's shiny is the best, which should be the biggest clue to which one we're using. Yeah, Donald, how about you stop giving away information like that and ruining the surprise for everyone? You need to find another topic to talk about. Well, I could talk about how much of an embarrassment you're being right now, Joe, but then you'd start having a meltdown. Hey, the battle isn't actually over yet, Donald, which means we still have a chance to win in my eyes. Go get your eyes tested then, Joe, because you have definitely lost this, and there's no way you're going to win. Sorry, dude. This stupid grass type hasn't even been using grass type moves. The cotton ball has basically been spamming around this entire time. OK, yeah, we're in trouble, boys. Obsidian has like five health points left, and I can't see this battle ending well, and it was our first one, too. So basically, what this has shown everyone is the fact that using shiny Pokemon doesn't mean we're always going to win, isn't it, Donald? Hey, don't bring me into this, Barry. Joe's the one playing Remember, and all I did was bring home the Pokemon to use, both of which are actually strong when an imbecile isn't the one using them. OK, well, on that depressing note, thank you for watching, everyone. Please remember to like and subscribe, and next time I'll be back with a stronger team. Seriously, what an idiot you have been today, Joseph. All right, boys, look who's back. I heard from my other persona that I lost the first gym battle, so Jizzy Joe Biden is here to beat this sheep man to a pulp. Also, like and subscribe, everyone. Oh, great, that so-called gangster rapper is back, everyone. Well, Jizzy Joe, you're right. Your other personality royally messed up our first gym battle, so I hope you do better. Yeah, we shall see how this goes, boys. Anyway, Donald, I hope you also managed to get that new Pokemon we talked about in the last episode. It's actually a special Pokemon one of our members wanted. Well, Barry, you'll have to wait and see what happens. But yeah, I think most people already guessed who it would be, but we still won't be giving it away just yet. Wow. So you guys actually lost to this fool. He doesn't even have a nose, and also you couldn't put your three dumbass brains together to come up with a proper strat to beat this guy? Well, technically, Joe, you were also involved in this battle, too, and you're the biggest dumbass out of us all. So, yeah, bro, don't blame Donald and myself. You better watch your mouth, you banana head. I'll make sure to rename you Prime Ape if you keep that sass up with me. All right, Jizzy Joe, let's see how well this battle goes now. What plan or strategy do you have in mind to deal with this guy? Well, we did some training off screen to get our team a little or higher level because this guy's Dynamax Pokemon destroyed us, apparently, and also using a Larvitar in this place was not a big brain move. Well, there's only two gyms where using Larvitar is a bad idea, Joe, and that's this one we're in right now, and then Nessa's one, which is the water-type gym. Yeah, true Obama. But back to this battle, Jizzy Joe. This guy likes to use normal-type moves more than he does grass-type ones, so keep that in mind. No worries, Big D. This first Pokemon is already dead thanks to us being level 24 now and using Double Hit, which can hit twice because it's called Double Hit. Wow, no shit, Joe, you fool. But anyway, well done, except his first Pokemon was never the issue to begin with. But anyway, let's get this done with. OK, so this is the newest Pokemon we have for the team, then I guess Donald. A shiny E, but hang on, I don't even know what we're supposed to evolve this guy into. Well, I can't tell you that right now, Joe, since we're live, but your other persona knows. Plus, it's going to be a surprise for everyone later. OK, Jizzy Joseph, the plan right now is to Dynamax this Pokemon and smash that stupid cotton ball Pokemon into oblivion. I got this, Barry. Don't worry. Just watch and learn how a master gangster Pokemon rapper dude handles gym battles like this.
I'm pretty sure you said something similar in the last episode. But anyway, this EV is really strong, Joe, already, and probably our best bet to beat this gym. I still can't believe we lost this battle the first time. Everyone in the comments was very disappointed in your counterpart, Jizzy Joe. So let's not disappoint our viewers again, please. I saw those comments to Obama, and no one seemed to care, actually. So shut your trap banana head, bro. OK, here we go, finally Dynamaxing our EV here with its super awesome luxury ball, too. I'm sorry, but Dynamax EV looks absolutely ridiculous, boys. It just doesn't make sense in my head as to why it looks like that. Yeah, that's one thing we can agree on, Obama. It does look like a stuffed animal that's been given growth hormones. Good way to put it, actually, Joe. But anyway, this has now become a battle of Max Pokemon. So just keep spamming the best attack we have and pray to Arceus. Arceus won't be needed here, Obama. Jizzy Joe and my gold chains is all I need to win. Arceus may have the 17 life plates, but I have 17 chains of my own. Oh, holy hell, that max strike attack actually managed to kill this overgrown ball of fluff with one shot. Nice one, Joe, that this battle went exactly like how I wanted it to. And there we have it, everyone. Jizzy Joe is officially the better trainer than normal peasant Joe, so going forward, you're battling all the gyms, and the other idiot can just do all the walking. Yeah, that's fine by me, actually, Donald. But anyway, I can go now, if you like, and bring back the other Joe since I did all the hard work for him. Nah, I think you should stay. I've had enough of that pea brain for a few episodes. Also, I'd like to point out that the badges in this game fit together like a puzzle. Yeah, the badges are perfect for someone like Joe who enjoys the age demographic of a youngster Joey. But anyway, good stuff beating the first gym, Jizzy Joe, and yeah, please stay. No problems, boys. I will stick around for the time being. And I guess now we can make our way towards the next town where I can destroy that gym leader, too. I'd love to give you some information on the next gym leader, but I can't remember for the life of me who it is, Joe, so you're probably going to go in blind. I mean, we could just Google it and then tell Jizzy Joe who it is, Donald, but I guess that would be no fun. Yeah, that is no fun, Obama. I don't want you or anyone to ruin the game for me since I haven't played it before. By the time we get to the next gym, Joe, we'll have a much stronger team anyway. So I think from here on in, the gym leaders might as well do what Volker did in the anime and just give us their badges LMFAO. Volkner gave out badges willy-nilly because he was so strong and bored of winning all the time. But the gym leaders in Galar are just weak to begin with. So they have no right to hand out badges, Donald. Hey, look, you two, we're battling these reporter people, which is exactly like the ones in the Hoenn region. And then when we inevitably beat them, they put us on the TV. Oh, yeah, I remember them, Joe. They were Gaby and that other fellow who isn't even important. But anyway, they have a helioptile and a clink. Yeah, Clink is an interesting Pokemon from Gen 5, I think. It's basically a bunch of cogs, and I have personally never used one and probably never will. Well, our Larvitar here is the perfect little Pokemon to use against these two electric types, and for once, it's actually doing something useful. And this tantrum move it is now is really strong. Yeah, I don't particularly want them to put us on TV in this game, though, Jizzy Joe, so if you don't mind, don't talk to them again. All right, well, this building here is interesting, boys, because I think it's one of the many breeding facilities in the Galar region where we can leave Pokemon, and they will get trained for us. Wait a sec, so you're saying we can just dump all our Pokemon in that place and the people inside will do all the training for us? And we don't need to even do anything? Oh, great, it's Team Yell again. And no, Donald, it doesn't work exactly like that. They will train our Pokemon up. But to get to level 100, you would need to take like a million steps in the game. Well, that's fine, Obama, because we have our resident moron being Joe, and we can tell him he gets a tub of ice cream if he takes a million steps for us. Yeah, you better not be talking about me, you moldy old turnip Donald. I am far above the desire for ice cream. Thank you very much. Yeah, did you forget that Jizzy Joe is with us, Donald, and not the other one? But anyway, Team Yell here wanted to act like a bunch of trolls and block this bridge off. These guys are definitely the worst team in the game, and I bet everyone would agree. Also, leave a comment letting us know which evil team you would join and why. I would join Team Galactic so I could have a cool hair color like those folks have, although Team Flair has red hair as their thing, which I think would suit me too. Oh yeah, hold that thought, Donald. This fellow just gave us the Rotom bike, which is the cool new bike system in this game in which a Rotom has basically possessed the bicycle. Wait, so does that mean that Rotom now has a bike form we could use in battle? And also, how comes we never get to use the Pokedex Rotom in battle either? That would be so funny. What isn't funny, Joe, is another battle with this idiot. It's like the guy can't even take a hint about being a trash Pokemon trainer who should have just stayed in his house. 
Well, to be fair to him, Donald, he has probably got stronger now and evolved some of his own Pokemon like we have. So let's see how he does this time. Yeah, we actually also have a semi-decent move now being Razor Leaf for our monkey Pokemon guys, which should make using this guy somewhat bearable now. Hey, did you know that we made a poll last week about the best grass-type starter? And pretty much everyone said that Rillaboom is the best grass-type starter Pokemon there is? Yeah, that was something I never really knew, to be honest, Donald. But since we're going to be using one in this playthrough, it'll be nice to see if that statement is true. This guy has pretty much got a fully evolved Team Obama, so you were right about that, although you were wrong about him being strong. A paper bag would be stronger than this punk. Yeah, that's probably true, Joe, but you didn't need to be that harsh to the poor guy LMFAO. I wonder if they'll ever release a game in which the rival will be a proper tough challenge. I can't remember the last rival which we faced who was somewhat difficult, except maybe silver or blue. Well, it will never be this guy, Barry, and he just said he's going to be sending out his ace Pokemon, which is weak to us, so what's so ace about it then? The only thing that makes this Pokemon his ace on Joe is the fact that it's lost more battles than any of his other ones, and that's about it. Yep, I don't think anyone will deny that point, Donald. And on that note, the loser has just lost yet another battle. Wow, and he just gave us the item. He probably needs more than we do right now. Seriously, this guy has less brain cells than the other Joe. Well, at least we get a nice view of where I think we will be heading next, boys. That is another thing I like about this game, which is the scenery can be quite pleasant on occasion. I can tell you where the scenery definitely will be pleasant, Donald. And that's in the town we're heading to next, because the gym leader here is a supermodel, and she's straight up fire. I see Obama's hitting on every female that's hot in this game, which I thought was my thing to do. But anyway, it's nice to see him breaking out of his shell. Your age demographic is either 70 plus or below 10 Jizzy Joe, depending on which persona of yours is currently inhabiting your fraily old body. Damn, check it out, boys. Rose, or whatever his name is, is actually looking fire right now, too, which is shorts and shades on. And he has that little strand of hair on the side of his face, which is so cute. I can't believe you're basically hitting on Rose now, too, Donald. What on earth has happened to the both of you? Okay, well, even I wouldn't go that far, Jizzy Joe, but each to their own, I guess. Let Donald like whoever he likes and hurry your ass up so we can go see who I like. I know exactly why you like Nessa Barry, but I won't say anything further than that LMFAO. Yeah, you damn well better not say anything further than that, Donald, before I give you a good old smack with Joe's crusty old hands. Well, here she is, Obama. The love of your life, who I thought was Sonia, by the way, but I guess you need more than one chick in your life. And she's already given us her league card, boys. I am so in now, and you better not lose to her either, Joe. We gotta show off how strong we are. So if we win then, Barry, she'll be impressed with Jizzy Joe and not you, dumbass. You didn't think about that, did you? Trust me, Donald. I know what I'm doing. Nessa and I are more alike than that old fossil rapper is. Anyway, I will tell you this gym puzzle is very annoying, Joe. This will be a cool episode then, boys, because we're gonna be battling two gym leaders in one go. And the first was grass, this one is water, and then I take it the next gym will be a fire type one. Yeah, that's actually true, Joe, but I can't remember who's after that. Not that it's really important since going forward we'll be crushing everyone. Okay, Joe, so with this puzzle, you gotta turn off the water from flowing in the pipes, which are blocking the path. But then again, if this takes too long, we can just cut bits out. Apparently that first gym puzzle was hurting a bunch of sheep, which my counterpart did so easily, so how hard can this puzzle be? We shall see Jizzy Joe because this puzzle is actually really, really annoying. So, yeah, it probably won't be fun. At least we know we have some advantage in this gym, though, unlike that first one, which we shall never speak of again, I think. Well, it helps when the people here are just using trash Pokemon like this little tadpole thing. I mean, I like Seismitoid, but Timpole is just garbage. At the end of the day, Joe, it's all free experience, isn't it? So no need to complain about it. Plus, with the training we did earlier, we should be fine regardless now. Looks like Jizzy Joe's little brain is working hard in solving these puzzles. Also, boys, I have been getting requests that we use Eternatus for our team since we said we wouldn't be using the box Legendary. What do you both think? Okay, well, I wasn't here for that discussion when you decided not to use the box Legendary, Donald, so I don't particularly care. Eternatus is pretty goaded, though. Yeah, I believe it's a dragon and poison type, but we will already be using Dragapult on the team, who I personally like more than Eternatus. So I would rather not use him, Donald. I was just asking what you thought, Obama. I never said we had to use it. Plus, I couldn't care less either, and I also like Dragapult more. Well, what I don't like, boys, is battling boring Pokemon like this Krabby and Corfish. Why would you bother coming into a gym with Pokemon like this? Hey, Joe, don't diss Corfish, bro. 
That Pokemon got Ash to the final eight in the Hon League, remember? Yeah, but I'd like to point out how Ash basically won every battle he was in after actually evolving his Pokemon compared to leaving them in the first stage. That was something I never understood. All right, yeah, can't argue with that point, Donald. It is true. But in other news, Joe has completed this silly little puzzle, which was a complete waste of everyone's time, and now it's battle time. Yeah, and I am loving these stadiums once again, guys. Feels good to show off to thousands of people how strong I am. Yeah, but remember, Jizzy Joe, we're only doing this to get a few digits from Nessa, which you will graciously pass over to yours truly. And if you don't, I will make sure you never come back. Wow, Barry is getting threatening now. Jizzy Joe, be careful, LMAO. But anyway, the battle has begun, and Nessa is leading off with a goddamn Goldeen. I know you love her, Obama, but what in the actual hell is her first Pokemon? Seriously? She's just as bad as those gym trainers I was battling earlier. All right, yeah, I did not expect this. I thought someone as beautiful as her would use Melodic or something to that effect. See, Barry, she's just pretty on the outside, but inside she is another bad Pokemon trainer to add to the list of bad trainers we've encountered in this game, which so far is every single one. I'd like to point out that Joe lost our first gym battle against the grass type dude, Donald, so I wouldn't say they're all bad. I won't be losing this one, though, guys. She's already two Pokemon down, and now she has one left, which she'll probably Dynamax, but she's still going to lose. Ah, yes, her last Pokemon is Dreadnought. I really don't know much about this thing since I haven't used one and probably never will either, because it's a Blastoise ripoff. Yeah, Dreadnought is what Blastoise would be if he walked on all fours and didn't have cannons. Uh, I agree, Donald. But here she goes, Dynamaxing it. And even that won't be enough for our Barry Monkey Pokemon. You're so strong, seriously, Obama, I won't even need to Dynamax myself to beat this thing. Okay, yeah, still don't appreciate being called that. Not that you care anyway, but well done, Joe. You have basically won this. Yeah, so much for Nessa. Anyway, I think our next objective should be to get Larvitar close to Evolving Boys, because when it does, we'll be even stronger. I agree, Donald, but I don't want any part of that, because Evolving, that thing will take ages, and I haven't got the patience for it right now. You should do it. Well, I certainly won't be doing it. I'm going to be taking Nessa here on a slick date to the Sinnoh region. Take her to Hard Home City, Barry, and make Poffins with her, and then take her to the Pokemon contest and show off how good you are at those. Donald, why are you helping him? I thought you'd want to sabotage him and Nessa from ever getting together. He will be sabotaging himself as soon as he takes the Pokemon contest stage, Joe, so I won't need to do anything. Okay, well, if you're done plotting my demise, Donald, we just got the TM for Whirlpool, which we'll never use, but we did also get the water uniform, which turns our outfit blue. Yeah, and that's something I'll also never wear either Obama, so we shall be swiftly moving on to whatever this lady wants. She wants us to have lunch with Rose at some restaurant or something, Joe. I guess he wants to get to know us a little more since Leon is sponsoring us in this whole shindig. I don't think he is Donald. We kind of just appeared and decided to take part in this challenge, but either way, Rose wants to see us for some reason. Maybe he wants to battle me to see what I'm about. I must say, as strong as I am, our current team isn't the best, so I hope he just gives us food. This must be the place, since there's a bunch of people gawking through the window. Oh, and Sonia's here too. Maybe she heard about how you want to hook up with Nessa now, Barry, and she's here to put a stop to that LMFAO. I doubt it, Joe. She was clearly invited here, and Rose seems to know how Sonia's grandmother is, too, so it makes sense. Oh, they're just talking about Galar Particles, boys. Nothing important right now, so how about we end this episode for now? Yeah, all right, Donald, so thanks for watching, everyone. Please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy our content, and consider becoming a member or a Patreon if you want to help support the channel. Yeah, GG, my beautiful fans. See you in the next one.